And this is a nice way of looking at it because a lot of you guys do struggle socially and some of you guys do struggle with, you know, anyone who struggles with that binary thinking, this is as binary as it gets. And, and it does work as a strategy, as a technique anyway, or a model for helping to understand it. So women are making these choices based on risk reward. If you can think like that, if you understand that and understand it, it's not a logical decision. It's emotional. So when they feel the benefits, right, then they'll go with, you know, the decision for sex when they, when, and when they feel the risk and, and feel the potential consequences if they're not feeling and, you know, in present, what's not present in their mind, their reticular activating system doesn't have a presence of mind of how great the sex is going to be or how much fun they're having or all that. And the reticular activating system is presence of mind of, uh, my friends are going to think I'm a slut or, you know, well, I was just talking to this other guy and now I'm talking to this guy. If I sleep with him, I'll feel like an idiot or maybe he won't want to be in a relationship with me or if I, if I do this too quickly or, you know, when, when, things flip into risk and consequence, right? Then and benefits and um, advantages to the sex are reduced in her mind, but not just her mind, but her emotional experience. Well, she's not, she's not having sex now. Okay. She's choosing not to. And in relationships and marriages, and I'll get into this, but stress as well as a need for power causes this flip into having more of an awareness of risk and consequence and losing some of the consequences are losing benefits, losing power in a relationship because that's their paradigm, how they look at sex. So now they start controlling the amount of sex they're having. They, and they don't do it because they really want to have sex, but they're going to try to control themselves. That's not how it works. It's that, that, that if you could think of their, you know, huh, desire to have sex and that internal horny feeling as a switch, the switch literally turns off. All right. And so that's what happens in the long-term relationship marriage, unless you do some things different. All right. But if you can understand, even from a pickup perspective, like a girl has, you've just met, you know, her friends are kind of like one of her friends is talking to a guy might even go home with that guy. The other friends are like doing their thing. She's had a couple drinks, but she's not too drunk, you know, so she's loose and then she's kind of isolated with you somewhere. And she's, you know, there's like, you guys are in that close space having really flirtatious conversations. Also her hormones are up because maybe she's ovulating. So she's, you know, having uh high sexual hormones there and all that. And she's in a, a space with you, more of an isolated space. She's got short-term thinking now, okay, and she's not perceiving risk or consequence of maybe going off and having sex with you as being as high, you know? So, like, you know, she's in this space with you, and, you know, she's has these good – she's able to have the desire and all the feelings, partly, too, because she doesn't necessarily know you, and maybe – you know, she doesn't want a relationship with you, right? Maybe that's what it is. And so the consequences of losing relationship potential or being shamed by her friends or feeling like a slut or, you know, possible danger, which you're not giving off any danger signals or vibes and all that. And so like all those consequences or potential risk for sex are down in her experience. And then, you know, those potential rewards are being built and, and more and more intense. And then next thing you know, you're, you know, you're, she's sending a text to her friend. Hey, I'm, 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 Ill I'm going to have this guy drive me home. I'll, I'll, I'll text you guys tomorrow. Her girlfriends are like, Ooh, whatever, like go, go get, go get some girl. Right. So the girls are supporting it. Right. And then, and then she, she ends up sleeping with this dude. Right. She ends up sleeping with a guy. Well, that's a consequence reward equation. That's one way of looking at it. Right. Whereas let's say same scenario, but then, you know, one of her friends is, you know, too drunk and potentially like a danger to herself and might not get home. Okay. And like all this stuff. And then this girl who's isolated with you and is having a good time. She's like the only 
person, you know, that she perceives she's the only person that can help her friend out. She doesn't want to look like a, she doesn't want to look like somebody who abandons her friend. She doesn't want a safety issue for a friend, like all the consequences now and risks of going off of this uh, with you to go sleep with you are now, you know, the risks and consequences of that to her friend and to her own reputation and some different things. They start to weigh more heavily, you know, maybe she makes out with you real quick, but then she's like, okay, I can't, I got to go deal with my friend. Right. And then she goes off with her friend. So that she makes, and you know, she makes a different decision. And we can break down scenarios into marriages, into relationships, into one night stands, into, you know, I've been dating a girl for three or four dates here and we haven't slept together. What does that mean? We can break it all down to risk and reward. If you can put, you know, in one column, how you perceive what's a, what's a bunch of perceived risks for her for sleeping with you. And some of those risks are completely in her mind. They're totally psychological mental paradigms, you know, but what are the risks here? You know, that she's perceiving with having some sex, right? Cause sex is fun. Sex is good. Most of the time, right? It should be anyway. I know for a lot of women, it isn't, which means that the, <laughs> because their partners are not that good at it or cause they're not in tune with their bodies, which means the re reward is reduced now, right? Not as much reward for sex. If it's not as great, not good for the girl, but at any rate, if you put down in one column, what are a bunch of risks? In another column, what are her perceived rewards? It'll make more sense to you why she's doing what she's doing. And then that'll allow you to sort of, we'll say, game, okay, through this, right? To lead her to having ultimately what would be good for both of you if she's in it with you and attracted to you, which is having good sexual relationship, having good sexual experiences. You can lead it there when you can understand this risk reward paradigm. All right. And this is a nice way of looking at it. Cause a lot of you guys do struggle socially. And some of you guys do struggle with, you know, anyone who struggles with that binary thinking, this is as binary as it gets. And, and it does work as a strategy, as a technique anyway, or a model for helping to understand it. All right.